Alrighty, good morning everyone. So this morning we are into our fourth part, kind of our mini-series within a series of whatever, of looking at Bible interpretation. Um, I'd, I'd said on Monday that a few people had asked me, hey John, so how do you find stuff in, in the Bible? Like how, when you go through the devotionals, how do you find these little nuggets? So we've looked at them uh, one at a time over the course of the day. So the first day we said you need to let the verse speak for itself. So don't see it as a fairy tale or something mystical. Just look at the verse as it stands um, and let what's there say what it says. Secondly, use the context to determine the meaning. So understand that the Bible wasn't written during lockdown in 2020 in South Africa. What was the context of what was happening there? Then thirdly, we said you should use clear passages to interpret unclear ones. And we're going to do a little bit of that today. And the fourth one and this is a great question to ask is, what does this text or what does this little reading or part of scripture teach us about who God is? It's really helpful because God, remember God wrote the Bible to teach us about himself and to show us himself. It's a lovely love letter written to us. And so today's text is um, from 1 Samuel chapter 18, reading from verse 10. And it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense if read on its own, um, the meaning of it or the application of it, if I can say that. So let me show you what I mean, and then we'll take it from there. So 1 Samuel chapter 18 from verse 10 says, The next day an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in his house, or raving, that word prophesying, it isn't prophecy, prophecy like we understand, he's raving like crazy, in his house, while David was playing the lyre, as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand, and he hurled it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. So that means he picked it, he threw the spear, then he picked it up and he threw it again and David got away twice. Now what's interesting is you've got to see this in the wider context in terms of other scriptures around it. Because in 1 Samuel chapter 19, now this is just the next chapter, verse 9 says this. Now tell me if this sounds familiar. But an evil spirit from the Lord came on Saul as he was sitting in his house with a spear in his hand. While David was playing the lyre, Saul tried to pin him to the wall with his spear. But David eluded him as Saul drove the spear into the wall. That night, David made good his escape. Now, that sounds pretty familiar. And I think to myself, if I was David and I saw, I saw Saul sitting there with a spear in his hand, I'd have one hand on my guitar and one hand on the doorknob, <laughs> ready to duck. Um, so those two scriptures are almost identical. So this, this thing happened twice that Paul tried to, Saul tried to pin David to the wall. But again, if we read another scripture, it adds a little bit more context. If we go back to 1 Samuel chapter 16, which we read um, a couple of weeks ago, it says, from verse 23, it says, Whenever the Spirit of, from God came on Saul, David would take up his lyre and play. Then relief would come to Saul, and he would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. So something's happened here, because what used to happen was David would play the lyre, the guitar for Saul, and the evil spirit would leave, leave him, and he would feel at peace. This isn't happening anymore. David's playing the thing now, and the, it seems like, if anything, it seems to enrage Saul even more. The comfort's gone. And not only does it happen once, but it happens twice. And so I'd like to apply this to our lives a little bit and make some application to where we're at for ourselves. And I've got two quick points this morning, and hopefully this doesn't take too long. The first point is this, that it's really important that we understand or we take stock ourselves of where we are at in our lives and we learn coping mechanisms to be able to deal with the things ourselves. Because for a short time, we can lean on others. And can I say this, during lockdown at the moment, we can lean on other people to help us. We can um, you know, rely on the phone calls and rely on the Zoom Connect groups and all the stuff that's happening, even maybe these morning devotionals. But at some stage, What's going to happen is even the things that are good for us that other people are doing will become frustrated with them because the frustration will eventually work its way out. It's just what other people can do for us. There's only ever a band-aid <clears throat> over our frustration. And at some stage, we've got to take a responsibility for ourselves. And I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I've, I have struggled the first couple of weeks. I didn't sleep much. I've been worried about the church and, and about people in the church. And it's only really in the last few days, probably since Easter, that I've, really, I've realized, you know what, I've got to take responsibility now. I've got to start sleeping properly, so getting good sleeping patterns back in place. Um, if I'm glowing a little bit, it's, just, it's because I've just been for a run, trying to get my exercise back up again. I've got to look at my eating, try and eat better, stop um, comfort eating. I've eaten more marshmallows in the last three weeks than I have in my life. Like, I've got to, I've got to start taking responsibility for my life now. Otherwise... What's going to happen is 
I'm going to start getting frustrated with other people. And I've got to take responsibility for myself. And guys, can I say this? That part of that is looking at the situation, realizing things aren't going to go back to the way they were. And that's okay. But being able to look at that and go, okay, sweet. So things aren't able to go back to the way they were. What do I need to do now to be healthy and well in my mind, in my body, and in my spirit? If you're not a person who spends time with God daily, can I encourage you, just even if it's a short space of time. Yesterday morning, I woke up and I was just feeling angsty inside and just, you know, that like disconnected feeling. It was, it was hard. And so I went through and I'm, you know, I'm not the most super spiritual guy in the world, but I went through to our lounge and I just started praying, praying in tongues, God, I need help. Lord, I need you to sort my mind out and just going to God. And while I'm busy praying, God starts dropping prophetic words in my heart for people in the church. So I sent a few prophetic words to some guys in the church. And it was amazing how God was able to swing my angst to be able to bless others. And friends, unless we spend time with God, we're not going to be able to find that peace for our frustration. And the second thing quickly is this, that we've got to watch what's in our hand. And Saul had the spear in his hand all the time, it seems like. I don't know if he was one of those kings who just sit there playing with a spear in his hand, waiting to pin someone. Um, maybe he went through servants a lot, you know, just pinned another servant and they dragged him off and buried him in the garden. But I, I suggest to us that the spear that we could be carrying in our hands at the moment could be frustration. Frustration with not being able to get things done. Frustration with the way situations are. Maybe frustrations with the people that we're at home with, that we're in lockdown with. Maybe frustration with the fact that we're in lockdown alone. And can I ask us in God to take that frustration to God and put our spear down? If I can ask you to remember one thing today, can I ask you daily, put your spear down. Don't carry that frustration because, excuse me, my run, <laughs> um, to take that spear and put it down and say, God, I'm leaving this in your hands. I'm not going to hold the spear in my hand because the problem is you carry that spear in your hand, you're going to throw it at someone. You're going to get frustrated with um, someone that you um, that you had locked down with, your kids or your wife or whoever it is. And if you're on your own, you're going to get frustrated with those people who perhaps haven't been getting hold of you and begin to grow a little bit of resentment in your heart. So Put your spear down today. Daily put your spear down. Let's not be like Saul and try to pin someone to the wall. So in the context of everything, let's allow, if we put our spear down, then what will happen is people's comfort will still be able to comfort us, but we won't be reliant on that comfort to get us through and for us to be able to be strong going forward. Looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow morning.